How high up is space? You're talking outer space and Earth's atmosphere, about 100 kilometers or so. Actually, if you started running straight up at an average running pace. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Impossible, but a fun analogy. It would take you 48 minutes to reach the point where there's no longer enough air for you to breathe. Sure. So dealing with freezing temperatures and almost no pressure differential to support human life. It would take you an hour to get to the height planes fly. It would take you eight hours. <laughs> and that's why you have pressurized cabin on aircraft. To reach the line that NASA defines as space, but it would take you 10 hours to reach the Kármán line, which basically everyone else defines as space. Interesting that there's a difference. Huh. Base. Just above this line is where Blue Origin has taken passengers. You'd reach that in another 20 to 30 minutes. If you kept going for 16 total hours. Now this process is kind of like withdrawing a control rod in a nuclear plant. Because at first, small changes make a big difference, like loss of oxygen, loss of temperature. And when you raise a control rod slightly, neutron flux increases sharply. But you get to a point when you're getting up to satellites where a pretty big change doesn't do a whole lot. Control rods actually have an interlock for this to prevent you from withdrawing them too high that reactor operators call the rods in heaven interlock. Reach some of the lowest satellites orbiting Earth. In 40 hours, you'd reach the ISS. So you're moving up at running speed, but you're moving sideways going multiple kilometers per second in order to maintain this orbit. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll just fall back. At 55 hours, you'd reach the average altitude of Starlink satellites. And sure. after 3,500 hours, or almost 146 days of running, you'd reach the farthest satellites orbiting Earth. Artificial, not counting the moon. 